I was paying for everything for a full third of the year. Unacceptable. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, Swerzies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. It was also cross posted to my personal subreddit r slash Red X reads so you can get it wherever you are. It is Guitar Beard, part number six, but speaking of getting it wherever you are, <laughs> I have started uploading some of the longer Red X sagas as podcasts, so you might be able to find me in places like Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, maybe, Audible, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, there is so much stuff, I've been up all night working on it, <laughs> and I am uh, quite proud, so... I know you guys have probably already heard the saga, but if you'd like to support me over there, I think I'm on SoundCloud too. Um, yeah, I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, <laughs> it was kind of a spur of the moment decision. A little bit short notice. I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row, but I definitely do thank you guys for watching or listening wherever you watch or listen. <laughs> so uh, with those shameless plugs out of the way, I guess we'll get some more shameless plugs out of the way, and then we can dive back into Guitar Beard, and some of this tasty, delicious Neckbeard Cringe. <laughs> guitar Beard Part 6, Deadly Alliance. Oh my god, who's joining the alliance? <laughs> OP, I hope you're not joining in an alliance with these beards. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a bad idea. You're gonna get stabbed right in the back. Alright, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Welcome to Guitar Beard, episode 6. We are now deep into the revenge arc. Where we last left off, Guitar Beard had finally flipped my shit switch by calling my sister a whore, which led to actions that I do believe some people found over the top. Yeah, over the top hilarious. <laughs> Check out the links in the description if you missed the antics of the last episode, because, uh... Basically, OP made Guitar Beard boof some water. <laughs> or not made him, encouraged him. It was good shit, I'll say that. So, I'll preface this whole part by saying, if you have a problem with retribution against someone who is very likely a predator, then maybe this is not the story for you. Or even the channel for you. <laughs> I would go that far. This whole part of the story mostly focuses on the prep for the removal of Guitar Beard from my life, and the numerous ways that I managed to fuck with him. <laughs> also, when we left off, Chastity was playing a game of boyfriend swap, jumping back and forth between Harry Potter and Guitar Beard. Two just ideal choices. <laughs> I still do feel bad for Chastity, though. So, with that cautionary warning out of the way, we will continue the saga of Guitar Beard. If you need to catch up, Reddit's resident neckbeard scientist and international man of mystery, <laughs> Red X. God, you're building it up too much. Mr. Worldwide over here <laughs> has narrated all the previous parts. Links are below, both in the post and, as I said, in the description. One, two, three, four, five. Look at them. Pretty all sitting in a row. And before we get to the story, let's get our cast out of the way. We got OP. That's me edgy pseudo-goth who likes his psychedelics and his personal space. I've grown tired of Guitar Beard's antics and have begun a rapid campaign of revenge schemes against Guitar Beard. Well deserved. <laughs> Guitar Beard, GB, a man who is constantly covered in a thin film of grease, a constantly whining man-child who continues to throw himself at his one and only Belady. He smells of baby gravy, old socks, and stale grease. HP is Harry Potter, looks like a fucked up version of Daniel Radcliffe, <laughs> and is Chastity's sociopathic boyfriend. We've also got Chastity, a girl with a tragic past, who was the poor victim of Guitar Beard and Harry Potter's, uh, affections, for lack of a better word. She's made a series of bad decisions in her life, and has some drug problems that will become very apparent in this part, 
but overall she does come out of this story as one of the best people. Annie, OP's sister, a complete mad woman who took a personal crusade against everyone involved in this story, a true agent of chaos. I do think that she pays homage to Lady Adelaide, the patron saint of beard slang. <laughs> if you haven't seen that Ramtide saga, please go check it out if you like beard vengeance. SFB is Scumfuck Bastard. Hey, a new one. And another one of Chastity's poor choices. Professional cokehead and all around degenerate. Harbinger of the end. Oh god. It just can't be good from the description alone. I told Chastity, pick anybody besides these two neckbeards. And she did. <laughs> she picked a cokehead. <laughs> uh, oh no. I'm going to be sad in this one, I'm sure. So this is a weird part of the story, the structure. A lot of stuff happens during this period, and it's going to be hard to keep it all in somewhat chronological order. So the best way that I can do this is to just take it one step at a time. Don't worry about chronological order. Let the viewer <laughs> sort that one out. As long as there's cringe, you know I'm in for it. So, after Guitar Beard's fun experience with severe dehydration, he soon found himself back together with Chastity. <sighs> Chastity had been coming around more and more, and their relationship was a fucking calamity all on its own. They were either arguing about her constantly leaving and returning, or having loud, awkward sex. <laughs> I'm not sure which is worse. Unfortunately, OP had to suffer both. <laughs> More often, they were just fighting, which led me to not want to leave my room very often. See, when they were done fighting, Chastity would usually occupy our living room. I still didn't know Chastity all that well, and personally found the chaos that she brought with her to be just kind of the slightest bit annoying. So for a while, I was just trying to completely avoid her. That was until one day, when Guitar Beard had left her alone in the apartment after a particularly long and loud argument. Uh-oh. She's gonna come at you, OP. <laughs> I see this one coming a mile away. I hungered, and I wasn't gonna let the sulking woman in the living room stop me from filling my stomach. Finding nothing in the fridge, I decided that I'd go to a local Italian joint. I grabbed a comforting hoodie from my room and prepared to leave. As I was slipping on my boots, she piped up. Chastity, are you going out? OP, um, yeah, I'm hungry and there's nothing in the fridge. Chastity, oh, when are you coming back? <laughs> Bitch, you don't even live here. Mind your fucking business. <laughs> OP, I'm not sure. Might just drive around a bit afterwards. Did you need anything from me? She then began crying. <laughs> oh god, it's such a mess. The part of me that was filled with the primal need for food was not swayed by this. The part of me that was aware of her troubles was. Ah, OP always being the bigger person, man. Chastity, I just don't want to be alone. Guitar Beard's being a dick and I don't know what to do if Harry Potter shows up. OP. Don't you have somewhere you can go that isn't your apartment or here? <laughs> uh, subtle. Yeah, go hang out in the park. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Chastity. No, I don't have anywhere. I mulled this over, and the scheme started to hatch. A way to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> OP. Do you want to come to get dinner with me? I'm going to that Italian joint. Chastity, are you asking me out? OP, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. I ain't hooking myself up to that train wreck. <laughs> I just love how OP is sympathetic and completely brushes her off at the same time. She's just a pawn in your machinations at this point. I think I see where it's going, but I guess we'll see. I'm just going to eat, and if you want to come with me, yeah, you're invited. She looked at me like I was a fucking different species. I don't know about other people, but I don't mind some dinner company. 
She acted like this was just a completely alien concept, but in my family, this is pretty normal. Are you one of those people that's scared to eat alone, OP? You know what kind of brass balls it takes to go to a restaurant and enjoy yourself by yourself? I admire anybody that could do that. However, I am not one of those people. <laughs> just to be clear. Chastity. So, you just want me to come eat with you? Nothing else? OP. Uh, I really can't make this any clearer. Are you in or are you out? She accepted the invitation with all the caution of someone who had long ago stopped trusting people. It was actually rather sad, as most things with chastity are. Along the way, I sparked up a joint and offered it to her, which she happily took. And after we were good and high, we started talking about stuff that was actually enjoyable. Philosophy, religion, metaphysics, all the kind of shit that I was really into. And surprisingly, she was pretty into a lot of the same stuff. I'm telling you, OP, <laughs> I was shipping you guys just a couple of episodes ago until I realized, you know, what an actual mess she is. I don't buy into that. I can fix some philosophy, but that's not to say that it's impossible. That's not to say that OP might not take a chance, although I really don't think that that's the way that it goes. It was actually the most that I have ever seen her engage in intellectual banter. In the long time I had been around her, this was the first time that I had ever seen her as a lively and energetic person. She didn't seem like the weight of the world was on her shoulders. She actually, dare I say it, looked like she was having fun. I have to admit, even after all this time has passed, I still remember what a miracle it was to watch that happen before my very eyes. A person who had seemed to just go from screaming match to screaming match was now having a normal conversation, actually opening up. I'm telling you, man, she's deeper than that. She's worth more than she knows. It's just that she needs to realize it. Dinner was a different animal, though. <laughs> Uh-oh. After some wine, she was beginning to get down again and started lamenting her stake in life. Chastity, I just don't know what to do. Harry Potter and Guitar Beard are constantly bickering over me, and I barely feel like a person around them. I just feel like a piece of property. OP, why do you deal with that? Why don't you just tell them both to fuck off? <laughs> like I said, in Unfortunate Nookie, I think just yesterday, <laughs> it takes a really strong person to just shove off from everybody and be like, I don't need ya. She wants to feel like she's attached to somebody because She's in a fragile state. At least that's my armchair bubblegum psychology. <laughs> Chastity, I don't want to hurt them. I've known them since I was a kid. Trigger warning right here, everyone. Grooming, fucking grooming. Last chance to get off the ride. Oh, God. I have no choice. <laughs> it was after this. The chastity had revealed to me her age. I was younger than Guitar Beard and Harry Potter, who were at least six to seven years older than I was. Chastity was just old enough to drink, so Guitar Beard and Harry Potter are around 28, which meant that they were 18 or 19 when Chastity was just 11. Jesus. She wasn't joking. I've known them since I was a kid. Yes, a fucking literal child. Oh, God. How did she get in with these fucking creeps at that age? Oh no, I have a 10 year old at home. I'm fucking flipping my shit right now. <laughs> uh, oh, so bad. This is terrible. Based on what I had just learned, these older men were around her when she was literally just a kid. Then Harry Potter made a move on her a little before she turned 18. And for reasons I don't want to dive into, I have a very heavy suspicion that she was being groomed by Harry Potter and or Guitar Beard. I definitely think that those suspicions are 100% correct. There's no reason for an 18 or 19 year old to hang out with an 11 year old. We gotta talk about fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Chastity. So, cause they hung out with me back then, I didn't feel so alone. Wouldn't I be just a monster if I broke their hearts? OP, well, 
What about your well-being? Don't you deserve to be happy? It's not your job to suffer for them. Chastity. What can I do, though? Harry Potter lives with me, and Guitar Bear is just always hounding me. OP. Tell him to fucking pound sand. <laughs> and try being alone. You told me Harry Potter doesn't pay rent. He's not on the lease. Just kick his ass out. <laughs> It seems so clear. People in an abusive situation often don't think as clearly as a third party might. Chastity says, Then I would be alone by myself. OP, yeah. And you wouldn't have to be constantly arguing. <laughs> <laughs> it seems scary, but you're gonna like it. I promise. The conversation continued on like this for a while. I was urging her to embrace a life of solitude until she got herself sorted out. She seemed to be really afraid of being alone, so I told her to make some friends. And after that, we delved into a long discussion about some spiritual bullshit. <laughs> I was asserting something absurd that I saw on an acid trip, and she was telling me that I was just adding reason to reasonless hallucinations. It was quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what I saw on an acid trip? The door to my humanity, and I was too fucking scared to go through it because I thought I would die if I did. <laughs> <laughs> was it real? I don't know. But I tried to explain it to a bunch of people at a party and ended up freaking everybody out. But anyways, now, here is where the scheme I was coming up with came into play. I ordered extra food for us to take to the apartment. I wanted Guitar Beard to see that I was out with chastity. I wanted him to be completely fucked in the head about it. <laughs> it doesn't take much for Guitar Beard to be effed in the head. So when we got back, we were both carrying in bags from the restaurants, and out on the porch was Guitar Beard. He looked like a fucking gasping fish, seeing chastity and I carrying on like friends and bringing doggy bags from the same restaurant. Guitar Beard. Oh, where the hell have you two been? OP. Uh, we went out to that Italian joint to get some food. Guitar Beard. You took my girlfriend out? <laughs> like on a date? Chastity. No, he just wanted some dinner company. It's nothing like that, babe. Guitar Beard. Oh, you expect me to believe that? A guy and a girl can't just go to dinner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I legitimately do believe that he believes that. That doesn't make it true. OP, I actually do it all the time. I like spending time with people. And she needed to talk to someone. Guitar Beard, Is she supposed to talk to me if she needs someone to talk to? Chastity, I can talk to whoever I want. Tensions were rising. <laughs> Steam was building. My seat was in the upright position, and my safety belt was fuckled. <laughs> Guitar Beard. Uh, is that what you think? That I want you talking to other men? Chastity. You don't get to tell me who I can talk to. Guitar Beard. If you're not going to step in line, then maybe I should just leave you. Chastity, go ahead and do it. You'll just be crying for me to come back in a couple of days. <laughs> she called his bluff right out. She got his number for sure. God damn, I'm loving it. And so is OP. <laughs> Internally, I cackled with glee. She was finally growing a spine. Maybe some of what I had said to her was actually taking hold. OP, Look, Guitar Beard, I am not trying to move in on your girl. I just wanted some dinner company, and she was hungry. We both know I can't possibly compete with you when it comes to women. <laughs> How did you say that without, like, extreme sarcasm in your voice? <laughs> How did he buy that? I guess just because he wants to buy that. He wants to truly believe it. And this shameless ego fondling did seem to soothe the savage beard. And the rest of the night carried on pretty peacefully, with Chastity and Guitar Beard making up, and me being content with some peace and quiet in my room. 
Guitar Beard shamelessly did eat our leftovers, though. I imagine he was a hungry boy, after all. <laughs> now this is where we must take a detour to discuss something about Guitar Beard that I have hinted at, but not outright stated. Guitar Beard only had a job for about four months out of the year. He was actually a pretty talented chef, and worked at a place that was only open for short bursts of time. It paid exceedingly well, but once that was over, he just tried to coast by on his savings, which only really lasted him about three to four months. <laughs> Meaning that I was paying for everything for a full third of the year. Unacceptable. Unforgivable. This includes food, cigarettes, his booze, everything. Why would you do that, OP? Why would you do that to yourself? Holy shit. Sometimes his parents helped, but mostly it was just me. Why did I do this? Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> well, for a long time, I thought he was my friend, and I always had trouble shaking off friends, even the bad ones. Well, I'm gonna take what you said to Chastity and flip reverse turn it around on you and say you don't need to suffer for them. How about that? <laughs> Logic bomb in your face. Like I said, it's a lot harder to see it unless you're a third party. So yeah, part of me gets it, but a much larger part of me would never ever fucking let this happen ever. <laughs> After my sister heard about the tactical dehydration, she used the knowledge of Guitar Beard's finances to her advantage. See, Annie would bring over food occasionally. Said the food was not for me, but it was meant to be left in the fridge. <laughs> A tempting treat for our Guitar Beard. Now, you might think, oh, I know where this is going. She put laxatives in the food. No, dear reader, not laxatives. Imodium AD was her drug of choice. It is the exact opposite of laxatives. <laughs> it causes constipation. Now, Guitar Beard was just a complete glutton when it came to these gifts of food, so he was eating an ungodly amount of Imodium AD. <laughs> oh, God. When that shit rocket finally goes off, <laughs> it's going to level the whole apartment. Eddie's little concoction did, unfortunately, work far too well. Guitar Beard ended up developing a bowel obstruction, which he had to have manually removed. Not surgically, just, uh, by hand. <laughs> Whose hand? His hand? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is so horrible. Oh, everything's going up Guitar Beard's butt. It's the worst sort of vengeance. It was around this time that Chastity had finally succeeded in kicking Harry Potter out of her apartment and started living there. She was alone, but she was making friends, and she broke things off with Guitar Beard as well. Hell yeah, Chastity. These were good times. I actually sparked a pretty good friendship with Chastity at that time. We'll get into that a little bit later, though. Let's get back to Guitar Beard's torture <laughs> at the hands of Annie and I. Since Guitar Beard was always bumming my cigarettes and gum, I had begun carrying around two types of gum. Nicotine gum and normal dentine. <laughs> so often I would offer a piece or two of the nicotine gum to Guitar Beard after smoking a cigarette with him. Now, here's a fun fact. <laughs> nicotine is basically poison. Shocking, I know. Now, if you smoke a couple of cigarettes and then start chewing nicotine gum, it can cause some pretty severe nausea. This would often result in Guitar Beard vomiting, or at least needing to lie down for a while. <laughs> Somehow, he never figured out that it always happened after bumming a piece of gum off of me. I don't recommend doing this to a person. If you're not careful, you can legitimately kill someone, so yeah, just don't. Also, you're supposed to not chew the nicotine gum, right? You're just supposed to, like, put it in your jawline and let the nicotine absorb through your gums. I think if you chew it, it can, like, shred up your cheeks and shit like that. That's how they administer the nicotine into your blood, I, I think. Don't quote me on any of this. I ain't, I ain't no nicotine gum scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Around this time, I had also given Annie a key to the apartment. She would come over from time to time, when I had taken Guitar Beard somewhere 
to rub her cat onto his pillows. <laughs> uh, that's a very cool cat, man. None of the cats I ever knew would put up with that shit. <laughs> that poor fucking cat. <laughs> See, Guitar Beard was extremely allergic to cats, and rubbing a cat on his pillows and bed often resulted in his eyes being quite swollen every morning. It would eventually subside on its own, but he went completely insane thinking that there was a cat living in my room. I did not have a cat, but I would occasionally have my computer play cat videos just to freak him out. <laughs> he would run if he heard meowing to just see me watching cute cat videos on my computer. <laughs> This is extreme psychological warfare, and I love it. There were many other japes and jabs along the way, but these are the more notable ones. There were still two more bullets left to fire, though, so let us return to Chastity's current situation. She was now living alone and pretty much outright ignoring Guitar Beard. I, on the other hand, was hanging out with her quite frequently. She was a cool person when she was in the right headspace, Probably one of the smartest people that I've ever met in my life. There was a time when she did make a pass at me, but I was not interested for two reasons. One, I didn't know this at the time, but I'm actually asexual, and therefore had already had my share of problems dating due to my disinterest in sex. And two, Chastity and I were very similar, but similar in a bad way. We were both enablers, and that would have spelled absolute disaster for both of us. There were no hard feelings, and we did stay friends. This did lead the way to one of the last bullets fired at Guitar Beard. Chastity and I formed a deadly alliance. Insert Mortal Kombat music. Dun 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 dun. I don't think we could do it because it's copyright. <laughs> but I gotta say, I'm so fucking relieved that you didn't form an alliance with one of the beards. Chastity is the right pick. Good job, OP. <laughs> This alliance would drive Guitar Beard to near insanity. We decided to pretend that we were dating and make it very well known to Guitar Beard. One day, upon returning home, Guitar Beard was there, several bottles of wine deep, huffing at me like an angry gorilla. Guitar Beard, you're dating chastity. OP, yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Guitar Beard. How could you do this to me? We're supposed to be friends. Why would you snake the girl that I'm in love with? OP, I'm pretty sure she's not even talking to you. Also, that's exactly what you did to Harry Potter, if you'll recall. Guitar Beard. That was different. <laughs> no, it wasn't, though. <laughs> This is just backstabbing. This is evil. I knew you wanted to get in her pants. OP, dude, it's over between you guys. She is free to date whoever she wants, and I don't owe you shit. Stop obsessing over chastity and pay your fucking rent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a non sequitur, but I do think that it had to be said. <laughs> Guitar Beard, I'm not gonna pay shit. We could get evicted for all I care. With this, he was in my face, my mind begging for him to take a swing at me. Guitar Beard, I told you not to cross me. OP, what are you gonna do? Hit me? I walked past Guitar Beard, shoulder checking him along the way, and made a call to a good friend who was also in sales. <laughs> I had him come and grab all of my inventory that was not for personal use, anticipating a possible problem. I never did get raided, but I had learned something from being around manipulative assholes this whole time, and I learned to plan for the worst. Once that was taken care of, I headed back over to Chastity's. We just hung out watching some shit movie, but later that night, the sound of an all too familiar cacophony <laughs> came billowing from outside. Guitar Beard was outside, strumming that old guitar of his, playing a revised version of his love ballad to chastity. Oh, you thought it was bad the first time. This time it's coming off the cuff. <laughs> you know it's worse. Chastity, 
Is that fucking guitar beard? OP. Most definitely. <laughs> Who else do you know that's gonna show up at midnight to play guitar? Chastity. I am gonna go beat his ass. OP. Nah, don't bother. <laughs> I then got up and pulled up the blinds and flipped off guitar beard. Then I closed the blinds again, and at this, he had grown silent. Now, I will admit that this next part was a bit of an unplanned surprise that made getting rid of him all that much easier. A rock came hurtling through the window. <laughs> Jesus. Which caused Chastity to shriek and caused me to just completely lose my shit. Before I could even try to comprehend a plan of action, Guitarbeard was crawling over shards of glass trying to get into the apartment. <laughs> what a maniac! Guitar beard. You think you're some kind of big man? <laughs> God. <sighs> what a scene. Guitar beard slurred this out as he tried to crawl through the window, cutting himself along the way. Then, as though karma itself had intervened, he slipped and smashed his head against the floor. <laughs> uh, this knocked him out. Cops were called. Restraining orders were filed. And due to his previous arrests for drunk driving, he was put on very strict probation. The kind that if you even jaywalked, you would end up in jail. I still had one last bullet left for him, though. Chastity got a restraining order, but I hadn't. So let's put that to the side, though, for now. The next major event is the appearance of Scumfuck Bastard. <laughs> See... Chastity's drug problem was getting worse, and she had started buying codeine from this dealer who was a slimy sociopath just like Harry Potter. I guess her fear of being alone got the best of her, and scumfuck bastard was soon to be her new boyfriend. Ugh, he didn't like me hanging around his girl! So Chastity began to spiral out of control again, and we couldn't hang out anymore. Fight him! <laughs> Finally came a night after we had stopped talking for a while. I called Chastity up to see if she just wanted to hang out with me and some other friends. Chastity, I'm sorry, scumfuck bastard doesn't want me going out. <laughs> I'd totally go if I could. OP, you can. He doesn't control you. Chastity, well, he's my boyfriend and I have to respect his wishes. Here's an idea, how about he respects your freaking autonomy? <laughs> Anybody? No? Okay. OP, I really hate to say this, but you know, you're doing exactly what you were doing with Harry Potter and Guitar Beard, right? Chastity, what the fuck do you mean? I'm happy with Scumfuck Best. <laughs> it's nothing like what was going on with Harry Potter or Guitar Beard. He's just looking out for me. OP, you know what? That's fucking fine. Don't come bawling to me when it all turns out the same. Chastity, you're just a pessimistic prick. I don't want to talk to you anymore if you're going to be like this. OP, fine by me. Have a nice life. After that, we didn't speak for a long time. It was hard losing a friend, but I knew that I couldn't help her. Ugh. She had made such progress and now slipping backwards. You hate to see it. I wanted to help, but... I'm the last person who should be telling someone to stop doing drugs. <laughs> I know what I'm about. I also knew that Scumfuck Bastard was basically fueling a powerful opioid addiction, and that didn't make the situation any brighter, so I just cut my losses. Ugh. I don't know why you keep trying to save Guitar Beard OP and then you leave Chastity hanging out to dry. That's the type of stuff that really burns me up! But at least OP has realized that Guitar Beard is no longer worthy of friendship, so now he's just uh, somebody to torture. But I do wish that uh, Chastity wasn't in the situation that she is. Guitar Beard was still living with me and was reveling in the fact that he thought I was being cucked by scumfuck bastard. <laughs> Guitar Beard, this serves you right for going after another man's woman. <laughs> you reap what you sow. OP, I guess we do. Now we're both beta males. <laughs> uh, 
Oh no, is this going to be an unholy beta alliance? I sure hope not. I said that with as much sarcasm as I could muster, and seeing him deflate was worth uttering such a stupid sentence. <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave things off for now. There's one final part to come, which will serve as the story of Guitar Beard's removal and an epilogue slash where are they now. I guess this is the last time I get to do the teaser. Aw, oh, snap. What will OP and Guitar Beard's final confrontation be? What is Chastity's redemption arc? Whatever happened to Harry Potter? Stay tuned and find out on the next episode of Dragon Beard Z! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reading. It's been really healing to relive this part of my life, and I thank everyone who has been with me on this ride. And what a ride it has been indeed, OP. Good God. I started out, you know, not liking Guitar Beard. Then I went to absolutely hating him. And now we're just torturing him, which is <laughs> the most fun of all, especially when you realize exactly how justified it is. I still feel really bad for Chastity. I'm glad to know that she does eventually get out of the situation. And I am foaming at the mouth for part seven to find out just exactly where they all are now. Guitar Beard in jail, Harry Potter dead in a ditch, Chastity making the big bucks, OP living his best life. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. That is truly what I'm hoping for. But I guess we'll just have to wait and find out a little bit later. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. It is always appreciated. Maybe share it around if you want to be like double plus cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that too. You can also check out them links in the description. All kinds of plugs and playlists and stuff down there if you want to check it out. There's also my social medias. Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh yeah, I'm everywhere, baby. <laughs> We've also got my wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful, generous patrons, and I'd like to thank them again in a chipmunk voice. <laughs> so thank you very much. Red Alex, Ben, Bone, Leggy Pants, River, TSM, Kirby, USMC, Aaron W, Twisted Child, The Wizard Jelly Donut, Cinema Susie, Fatboy Shrimp, Fire Drake, Gigabot, Latin, Libison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Robbers, Zero Max, Megalo Marshall, Coro, Captain Clown Show, Josh Kitsune, Little Momo, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Satori, Ananaki, Asian Persuasion Station, Fabsy Coon, Bitch Gremlin, Crossy Fox, Commander A Tank, Thanks for Night Light Disposable Wife, Aaron Lennox, Fisher, Diggy, Gypsy, Hadrian, BR, Heathcliff, Apparently MJ Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Simpoofa, because if you're poofing a spree, Miss Monday, Lexi loves JoJo, Lord Lionel, Lori Ellis, Marble Jerry, a different Jerry, tastes great, less filling. <laughs> Zach, it's a rule, Mel Gunn, the destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. Jerry, oh, that's another Jerry, <laughs> the Jerry prophecy is happening. <laughs> Uh, my boy Nat one Nick, Natari, hey, we talked on Discord for a little bit, nice to meet you, that's a new one, Lady Nix, or Gamer Steve, Phantom of the Pines, Kitty Kiss Elizabeth, Sidestep, Puggy, Rosemary Miller, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ash, Siegfried, Staples, Yeet, Synaptic, Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tapioca, Boogaloo, Tato Fair, Tate Police, The Deck of Bud, The Winter Fusky, Treeberg, Womax, Yet Another, Different Jerry's, <laughs> oh god, there's so many Jerry's, what, what's happening, Zero Blacktail, Kira M, Kitsikin, Red Wing, Deuce, Sesok, Nada Viper, Saints, Lesson, John Indoors, Anomal Joe, Amara, A Roxas, Banish Knights, Babushka's Radiant Jam, Cake Jerry, The Original Different Jerry, <laughs> California Keto Girl, Chris Meska, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, The Fawn, Ghost of Alpha, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Level of the Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Mud 11, Movie Next Time, Milk Fed Gift, Miss Duchess, Organic Game, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raga, Raptor Arts, Spoonie the Rogue, Steampunk Ellie, The Last Shinobi, The Necrobomicon, and Token Black Kid. Thank you guys all so much for supporting in the way that you do. It does mean the world to me, honestly. That last day of Patreon is upon us, and blessed be all the patrons who have decided to support. I do hope some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now... Don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. Especially if your name's Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.